Hey everyone, welcome back to Automation. So today is going to be another video just like last week, except this time I'm going to be doing a little bit more on my previous build instead of starting a new one. So if you haven't seen that video, I'd encourage you to watch it. I know it's 40 minutes, but it's a good 40 minutes. So yeah, uh, please watch it. Continuing on from that, uh, we learned some things about our Land Rover and uh, somebody in the Discord has uh, gone ahead and made their own version of it. <laughs> Actually, a few people have. Uh, so let me just show you an example of one such Land Rover that could be made. This one is by Nat64. Uh, lots of power and uh, lots of height as well. Some of the fixtures aren't working correctly. It's just with the way that it's imported. But overall, pretty darn cool Baja style Land Rover. And this kind of inspired me to make another version of it because I feel like that would be a fun thing to do. Uh, and this time it's going to be Enduro. Now when I think of Enduro, I kind of think of these style Baja Runner truck things uh, because endurance racing is often off-road, something like the Baja 1000 uh, is an endurance race, uh, but I'm going to be making my own thing. By the way, these cars that you see here are from the Discord, uh, and that car is well, the Land Rover is from the Discord, so if you want to join the Discord, link is in the description, and you can post your cars, and they may end up in videos. That has been the case for years now, and the link does not change. It's always there, so check it out. So for those of you who do not remember, this is my Land Rover, which I have aptly called the Landy Rover. It was made specifically to take on the Leap of Death, which is an off-road challenge, and it succeeded at that quite handily. Uh, it has a lot of torque, it's basically just a really good off-road vehicle, and I thought, well, why not expand on that a little bit and kind of specialize it. So this is a clone, and the engine in this is great, so I'm not going to change it. We're going to go for the same sort of twin turbo, uh, it's an inline 6 with some decent power, 335 to be exact not much needs to happen there but the rest of the thing could use a little bit of help so let's get into that okay first of all I love the green but I'm gonna make a new paint here because we need this one to stand out just a little bit extra and uh, for that it's going to be purple oh that's a little too baller the problem is that green really suits this thing quite well so making it any other color it kind of hurts me a lot on the inside white doesn't make any sense <laughs> red i guess i don't know all right high shine blue it is i think that's the best that i can get just from a quick paint scheme test uh, so <laughs> different color different car now we know so there were a few things that I missed last time, and there are a few things that I did not even do last time, including, but not limited to, uh, this entire uh, advanced car trim aesthetics that we can add to it, uh, which includes stuff like making the wheels have a ridiculous offset, i.e. this. <laughs> oh yes, we can go for more width, and uh, we can go for more diameter. Lots and lots of little things to play with that are honestly just way too much fun this is the reason to get the beta alone we'll come back to that later though because for now i just want to add an interior <laughs> i kind of missed that last time i really should have added something so there are a lot of interior options i'm going to try to incorporate the ones that i think make sense stuff like these old bucket seats and things i know it's 1970s but come on now it just looks cool <laughs> so it might not be period correct i know some people have complained about that before but it doesn't really matter this is all just for fun anyways let's add some door cards and stuff and really get into this a little bit okay our dashboard is in i'm just going to quickly recolor this stuff into something that's not so hideous uh well, <laughs> I'm not going to have much luck with that, am I? So a floor is something that is kind of hard to do. I have never done one before. Uh, we do have a lot of options for flooring, but... Uh, <laughs> oh man, floors are scary. There's just so much going on. Let's just try one of these pieces. You know, I might be able to make this one work, actually. Okay, I've gone for just kind of regular seats, uh, because... Yeah, I kind of feel like that's more, <laughs> it just makes more sense. Uh, so leather-wise, I'm going to have to make something as well, probably. Let's just go like black leather. Except leather is not letting me color it for some reason, so it's actually going to be cloth. Uh, and we'll just have to pretend that it's leather. Okay, I was going to go for that like 70s back seat, but let's just go with this <laughs> for here. Uh, I'm just going to clip it in so it kind of covers 
the floor as well so it kind of makes it look a little bit more uh, <laughs> complete <laughs> I guess is the right word for it basically I'm just trying to fill in the gaps that I've left overall though I mean it's it's not bad it's just a simple five-seater vehicle it it doesn't take that much to put in an interior I probably should have done this a while ago okay so part of the interior is done we obviously need door cards and also an entire rear end <laughs> so that's gonna be fun but uh, oh yeah we need a shifter or something too I realize again that this dashboard does not make a single lick of sense but it's okay <laughs> the car just immediately looks better with an interior and this is with clear, crystal clear windows as well so once we tint these it's gonna be looking mint okay so there is an interior in the car which is something that uh, again I probably should have done a while ago but with windows tinted to uh, point 0.1 I think that's gonna be that <laughs> hard to see but it's in there and that just adds a little bit of extra detail that we we're missing before something to make this thing just that little bit better so I'm happy with that time for some drastic changes now the advanced settings let us do a lot and uh, that's sort of the fun of them <laughs> but uh, for the purposes of this build it's really difficult to try and figure out exactly what I want to do because we could just go for the wide offset big boy and I think that's what I'm gonna try first of all wide offset going on to the front tires this is where things can get interesting <laughs> in the sense that we can make something just ridiculously huge for uh, well there are many reasons to make something huge <laughs> also we could go for this which is cool I guess if you want stretch wheels this is your method you know what guys I thought about it <laughs> for the last couple minutes here and enduro <laughs> is technically a race right let's make things a little bit different let's make an enduro for the arctic arctic enduro i think that's even cooler in fact let's make this styled after one of those gigantic icelandic trucks because i have the ability to do it i don't see why not so first thing we're gonna do is just widen the fenders all the way okay so that's that's a good first step right <laughs> now we go maximum width i've got the wheels here as big as they can be 18s is going to be fine but maximum offset at least in this allowable version is going to be looks like 85 which is pretty significant that looks like an icelandic truck does it not <laughs> are we in the right territory at least i think so pulling out the advanced settings again i think uh well i have the wheel offset crammed all the way to the furthest it can go but these tires are just not big enough it's just that's that's not gonna do it okay we need more and so with that, I give you the Mega Wheels. <laughs> yes, maybe a little bit too big, but uh, <laughs> they're massive. <laughs> they're absolutely massive. A lot less square as well. I just, it kind of looks like an Arctic Trek, all right? It, it is perfect. <laughs> I really like it. Let's shrink down the wheels just a little bit, because maybe that's into the fenders a little bit more than I'd like, but 17 perhaps? 15 maybe? <laughs> Nah, 15 is lame, let's go 20. But with both of those wheels jacked to the nines, uh, this truck might be ready for an Arctic expedition. Like, it, it is definitely feeling like it's ready. That is very, very, very tall. If we take a look at the suspension, uh, there's more ride height that we can get, uh, but I am not sure that we need all of it. I'm gonna take some of it for sure. Uh, maybe get this up to 600 or so, but I don't want to make it too high. I don't think these Arctic trucks are super high. They're kind of just somewhere in between. So regarding suspension, I think I'm just going to leave everything else as is. The thing was very soft before, which is fun. <laughs> and so that's probably going to be good. Like the design changes don't really need to happen. The Arctic truck Enduro here is... Uh, <laughs> it's bigger than it ever thought it was going to be. I'm very happy to see it. Okay, let's take this thing into BeamNG. Let's see how it behaves in some snow and some sand. And I'll report back to you on uh, <laughs> whether or not it fits the bill. Can we take this thing to the Arctic? Probably. <laughs> Probably not. Maybe Iceland. Let's go there first. Okay, so here's our Arctic trucks big boy in the grid map. And the reason I'm in the grid map is because... I don't have that many snow maps. <laughs> I'm gonna have to enable a snow map for us to be able to get through uh, any snow other than the ice on the grid map. So 
I figured we'd just roll around a little bit, kind of see how it behaves in a general environment, because if it doesn't drive well just as is, then it's probably not going to drive well on snow. At least that's the theory. <laughs> I, I mean, there are some specific vehicles that are always better on snow, stuff with treads uh, and tracks specifically. Um, that's what I meant to say at the beginning. <laughs> some words don't come out right, but that's okay. Uh, one thing that you will note is that this truck is torquey as heck, uh, which is cool, <laughs> but uh, I'm not sure how much difference the big wheels make. Uh, apparently Filman has a video on this, I haven't watched it, but uh, there are <laughs> there is some evidence to say that the big wheels don't actually do that much in BeamNG, so um, it's all for show, but uh, it's definitely a good show, if nothing else. And look at that height as well. <laughs> Oh yes, it's pretty beefy. It's maintaining the same level of softness that I had in the last build as well, which is good. Uh, except this time, overall, I think the design is just nice. <laughs> this is a cool type of vehicle where you can kind of just morph it into whatever you want, and I'm really liking that. Uh, it's cool to see what the community can come up with. By the way, uh, this will be posted as well as the original file in my Discord, so if you want to make something out of these then uh, feel free to do so. Let's run down some ice real quick. Uh, I'm not expecting too much on ice. I don't exactly have studs. <laughs> yeah, we're just sliding the tires here. Unideal. But with some momentum in third gear, I'm thinking I can probably crest this, and yes, yes I can. And a pretty decent landing as well. So this is a fun map called the Velodrome that I use uh, fairly often for snow testing, I guess. This is the whiteout version of the map, and uh, my default car is not at home here to, <laughs> at all. I think I could probably get through it if I tried hard enough, but let's pull out the Arctic Beast and see if I can't just do this map in one go. So yeah, that's the goal. One go, and just to see if I can't just make it. Uh, I, I feel like I probably can. Now, there is one thing that I regret a little bit when I made this, uh, just a couple minutes ago. I probably should have cut the exhaust off. <laughs> I think that would have made it a lot more fun. But let's be honest, I'm pretty sure the Arctic trucks do actually have exhaust. Uh, it's funny how this build went from Enduro to Arctic as quickly as it did. <laughs> I saw an opportunity and I couldn't stop, okay? That's just how it goes sometimes. So the real reason that I was thinking about this is because the durability of it was quite significant during our uh, run up the leap of death and I was able to do it in only a couple of resets one of them is because I was just dumb and I accidentally drove into a wall when I wasn't looking other than that it made it up no problem I'm not going fast but I'm gonna be able to do things at least the hard way <laughs> slowly man these tires are huge and the soft suspension it basically just means this thing floats over everything, which is a lot of fun. Uh, this isn't exactly deep snow or anything like that, but I'm going to quickly search on the repository to see if there's anything that is deep snow, because I'm kind of curious what this is going to do. Let's take the hard pathway, because again, uh, I like it difficult. Oh, <laughs> that was almost going to be a reset right there. You know, I'm going to allow myself to flip it over if it, if it so needs, but... <laughs> Yeah, no, no problem so far, none at all. Let's take the uh, bumpy road variant, at least part of it. Again, no issues. The king of all snow takes over, and I haven't even had to get into low range yet. We're just, <laughs> we're just ripping. I probably could have brought this to the, uh, actually, <laughs> I just stalled. <laughs> I was gonna say that I probably could have brought this to the uh, leap of death, but it's a little bit wide for that, and maybe that wouldn't have been the best idea. <laughs> It'd be fun, though. It would be fun. Ooh, spooky snowstorm. <laughs> How will I ever succeed? You know, this map is kind of like uh, Motorstorm a little bit. and That's one of those series of games that I kind of missed out on. I never had a PlayStation 3. I still don't have a PlayStation 3, so I'm very behind on the Motorstorm times here. <laughs> I feel a little bit bad, because I always wanted to play it, but... Anyways, maybe one day. I've kind of been collecting old games and, by that extension, old consoles as well. Uh, so I've been playing Fable on the original Xbox a lot. Kind of on that old game kick a little bit, if you know what I mean. But yeah, having fun is what this is all about. Let's uh, take the high road here. Um, 
I know that the low road is a possibility, but it, it is the low road for a reason. The thing is sketchy as heck. Uh, let's try to avoid death at all costs here. I'm going to say that, uh, surprisingly, I still have two side mirrors, which is more than I could say for the leap of death. <laughs> uh, this is a much shorter course than the leap of death. Um, it's also a lot more difficult, I would think. But, uh, well, if you know the course, I think I, you should be okay. There are some places, though, like coming up here, where you kind of just have to pray. <laughs> Down the ice we go, and that's all we can do is just pray and hope we don't get smashed at the end of it. Because it's an ice waterfall of absolute pain and death, and uh, I guess I can control myself at least a little bit. Can't even see the bottom though, I like it. Okay, let's take this course here. I don't usually do this one, uh, but it's off a ramp, which is a bad idea. Oh, please don't die. Oh, <laughs> that was scary. So yeah, we'll see if there's any, oh goodness, no. Okay, no radiator damage or anything, just the front end, and we're driving fine, no problems. But yeah, let's check out a deep snow map after this, and if that fails, then there's always sand. Sand is close enough, <laughs> because I have officially finished the velodrome without having to reset. Uh, admittedly, it was a slow lap, I wasn't exactly trying to go quickly, and uh, the damage, fairly minimal. I guess that's what happens when you have a pretty good overhang at the front. Um, and also just beefy tires to soak everything up, like this thing doesn't really have many places to hit. Everything hits the wheels. So just looking up snow on the repository only gives me three things, <laughs> so... But I have found Mammoth Valley, which is a large map with snow, so let me just download this and then we may as well just kinda drive around, I guess, just see what's going on. Okay, awkwardly that map came with several variants, I'm assuming that some of them I uh, don't have trees. <laughs> Let's do this one here first at the bottom and then we'll try one with trees. Alright, a snowy map. This is exactly what we were looking for. An arctic road, at least we can pretend. Uh, and it seems like the draw distance is extremely low. I guess that's what this map is for, more performance. Uh, but that's fine. <laughs> Look at this. Ramps and fun stuff. Oh, I probably should have seen this before. Up to 130 in the snow, that is a dangerous proposition. However, I feel pretty safe with this truck. I'm feeling like it can probably take it. And that's a good thing. 150 kilometers an hour, up into fifth. I think it's capping out at five years. I don't remember giving it six. <laughs> However, I feel like I've definitely done some good here with this design. And just overall, this is, as people have been saying, one of my better designs. And I just wanted to say, while, while we're cruising around in the Arctic here, just thank you guys for some of your comments on the last video. It wasn't a super popular video views-wise. Obviously, it could still come back, but uh, I'm, uh, I'm just thankful that uh, even though not many people watched it, the ones who did actually enjoyed it, so I appreciate it, guys. This is not exactly the slow Arctic crawling that I anticipated doing here, but I'm happy to just drive and enjoy the scenery, too. And I do feel like this thing is right at home. Uh, and the blue color is just perfect as well. Eventually I'm going to have to get off the beaten path though. And maybe try out some of these snowy hills. Into a tunnel for some reason. Tunnel run in the... Uh, at 200 kilometers an hour we're going for a tunnel run. But I mean hey. Uh, okay I'll take it. <laughs> Does the tunnel ever end? Okay, there's the end. I've discovered a top speed of around 230 kilometers an hour, and I've discovered a top force of probably gonna die <laughs> and lose all the wheels. Oh my goodness, this map is huge. And there goes our back seat. <laughs> Sorry, passengers. Okay, I loaded into a different version of the mod, and it would seem like that previous one is a more performance-oriented version because, uh, yeah, no trees, no snowflakes, that kind of thing. But let's go off-road just a little bit. Let's cruise around and see what we can do just messing around in the snow. I mean, the game is kicking up mud, so... <laughs> I mean, the snow doesn't actually have any depth. But it's good just to pretend, and I feel like it's worthy of our, our time here. So let's just do it. Let's bounce around a little bit. Boom! I like what I'm seeing. Oh, <laughs> yes. You know what's kind of funny is uh, another member of the Discord and another Join Button member as well. Uh, Childish Sin has made a version of this thing that is purely made to not go off-road 
and I almost want to see that up against this in some kind of off-road battle. <laughs> Let's make it happen. You know, I see a mountain and uh, I'm gonna climb it. That's, that's just how I roll. Go into first gear, up into second maybe. We're not gonna be able to build much speed here, but I do wanna try. Is it possible to get up this gigantic cliff? Uh, probably gonna have to lock some diffs and that, <laughs> such to be able to do it, but I mean, I'm doing 60 k's an hour here without any issues. Although we are slowing down just a little bit. Ooh. 50 down into first. Come on, don't slip on me yet. I really want to lock the diffs and stuff. I gotta get <laughs> gotta get my mouse down there. Lock, lock. I'm gonna stay in high. Oh yeah, no problem at all. We're cruising up the mountain now. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> this thing has no trouble in the snow. It was made for this. Second gear is definitely a bit of a wash. Uh, it's not quite the right spec to be able to do this, but I'm not sure that I'm able or I'm supposed to be able to get up to this high, uh, so I'm kind of happy to, to see this. <laughs> Man, this is looking cool. So I've been observing the mountain for a few minutes here, just kind of looking around, seeing what there is to see. It seems like the map kind of ends here, and that might just be scenery, but I do want to check, although I feel like that might just be a picture over there? I mean, if it isn't, we're gonna find out. I've also over-revved the engine. Oh yeah, okay, it, it is just nothing. <laughs> well, it was worth a try. It is kind of cool to just fall off the map. But now that we've conquered the top of this mountain, there is a lot more map here to explore, and I'm kind of interested in maybe doing a bit of an Arctic expedition at some point, so if you're interested, uh, maybe we can turn this into a multiplayer event at some point. Uh, we'll see though. <laughs> if I don't blow up my engine every time I'm running down this hill. Turns out video games are not realistic. Uh, I thought I could just run down here without any gear issues. <laughs> oh, that's a rock. Oh, that's rough. <laughs> you know, this video wouldn't be complete without a little bit of destruction. But in all seriousness, no. <laughs> Thank you for watching this video. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. A little bit of different stuff going on this time, a little bit of me being out of it. <laughs> it's been a long week, but uh, I'm back to work these days, so uh, yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm just a little bit a, <laughs> a little bit tired <laughs> compared to what I usually was before, but I'll get used to it and get back into the swing of things. Then we can be bouncing this arctic crawler all over the place in a more serious fashion. Maybe I'll actually live through it. But yeah, guys and girls, hopefully you enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys again next time. And uh, before we go too far, I just wanted to say, uh, be sure to subscribe to this channel if you're enjoying these videos. And also like this video and comment and such if, if you really uh, feel like you need to. I'm, I'm reading pretty much every reply these days. I'm trying to be active with you guys in the comments. And uh, I always appreciate seeing those positive ones and those ones with tips and stuff. And uh, sometimes criticism too, depending on <laughs> depending on how much criticism. Uh, I I definitely am there to read it at the very least. So, yeah, just wanted to say that now. And it's on to the supporters. Well, it's time that I thanked those who have chosen to support this channel, specifically Overlord QT Bear Terry Williams, uh, J Pope Davis Heister, the German dude Mickey K One Sleep Six Four, who was featured at the beginning of this video, Sinlab, who I also talked about in the video, uh, Jared Grigg, and Goofy Plays Badger, and Phoenix Shark. My goodness, I said and a little bit too early there. There are more of you than I remember, which is a good thing. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I'll see you again uh, in the next episode next week, probably Malbazo, and then also another automation video on the Saturday or Sunday, depending on when I can actually get them out. Um, but uh, just so you know, there is a Discord specific channel for you guys. That's where I'm getting the stuff from uh, SimLab and also Sleep64. Um, you can just send me stuff there directly and I'll definitely be able to see it. I'm trying to be a little bit more active in that channel specifically. Uh, so that does exist. Just so you know, I'll see you guys again next time.